Ah, pretty sunset tonight. Unfortunately, uh, that usually means that we're not going to have uh, good conditions for imaging. But, I got something. So, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of a unboxing slash unwrapping. And, uh, a hint, it is for that guy out there. And yes, I am still doing sky flats. But anyway, let's see what I got here. So, this is one of those 365 covers. I thought I'd do a short review on these. So this is the third cover that I have. Let's see if that shows up. Uh, the deal is that I am borrowing a TOA 130 refractor from a friend who's out of town during the holidays. And I didn't really have a good cover to cover that guy up. And um, so I've been using a smaller one for my 115. And honestly, this one's too small. This one right here is really for like an 80 millimeter scope and I got it originally to run on my 70 millimeter scope which works fine and I can squeeze this over the 115 but I've been meaning to get something bigger and when I got my hands on this 130 it gave me the excuse to finally uh, get a bigger cover now this one is intended for six inch refractors so it's going to be too big really for my 115 but too big is not a problem in my experience and it should fit that 130 really well man the sunsets here are just amazing I don't know how well that's showing up I really need a new newer camera this is a pretty old 1080p alright so I parked the scope I'm gonna go ahead and get this cover on there um, it actually kind of looks clear over here. Not great, a lot of high altitude stuff. My app says it should be clear around midnight for a few hours, so we'll cover this up and uh, keep an eye on conditions. Let me get it covered up real quick. All right, <laughs> this this uh, cover is huge. Um, you know, maybe I need to uh, just get, my, get a 150 millimeter refractor now to fully utilize this cover. It's going to be kind of funny with the 115 under there, but it'll work. It comes down. There's still plenty of open air. A couple things I wanted to show. Um, it's got these tie downs here, so you can adjust this little piece here and cinch that up pretty good. And each cover also comes with an extra strap. So I can tighten it up down here and I mean that's really why having one that's a little bit too big isn't too much of a problem. Alright, one more look here. Uh, I got that extra strap cinched up in there so that gives you an idea of how it can sit on the telescope. And uh, this one right over here, this is my Celestron Edge. So it's a cover design for an SCT. Um, the camera the imaging train fits no problem and it goes down pretty good. Uh, they do make these covers specific for uh, equatorial mounts or the uh, alt as mounts. Okay, so I just want to talk a little bit about the cover itself. Uh, first, here's their website, Telegizmos. 
And uh, I mean, you can order these covers from a lot of different places, including Amazon. And uh, High Point Scientific is the one where I bought my uh, latest cover. All right, so you got this tan uh, cover. It's um, they're calling it an acrylic coated weave. Uh, it's held up pretty well. My uh, uh, the first one that I've had, I've had for a few years now, and I'm not having any tearing or any kind of issues with the exterior. Uh, with the interior, it's hard to see in this picture, but it's got this radiant barrier, so it's got this silver color. Uh, this part here is a little bit more um, fragile. Uh, in one case, uh, I had some Velcro tape on one of my tripod legs, and the um, I guess it lifted up, and it started to stick. The sticky side was sticking to uh, the silver area as I was taking it off, and it ripped a small little piece out of there. But, I mean, that's not really the fault of the cover. Um, it's just my own negligence. And, I mean, right here, I mean, they say that this is intended for 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, so, <clears throat> these covers are intended to stand up to the elements. And uh, I can attest to that. My gear has been underneath these covers under all kinds of conditions. And uh, I've got a, I got a couple pictures to show uh, at the end of this. Now, a couple of thoughts just from my experience with it. Right, they've got this radiant heat protection, right, protecting your equipment from radiant heat buildup. I will say it does get warm underneath that cover. Uh, so it's not, it's not completely uh, blocking it all out. But I think it just keeps it from getting uh, too hot, a, kind of like a runaway hot under there. What I can tell you is that um, the, the scopes tend to cool down faster when I have them outside under the covers. So if we're going to go through an extended period of time, um, you know, a week or more or some serious inclement weather, I usually take my telescopes in. Uh, I do leave the mounts out and I leave the um, uh, the covers over the mounts. And the main reason I do that is I'm, I'm, I'm worried about strong gusts of wind knocking the whole thing over that's the main thing and if it's going to be really moisture moist out there for an extended period of time um, I don't want the telescopes to be uh, exposed to that much moisture the mounts seem to handle it better uh, and speaking of moisture uh, you you will get some um, like dew underneath there some moisture in there uh, so that's another thing to be aware of that if they're covered and the conditions are right, you could get some condensation forming underneath. So uh, let's go through some pictures here really quick. Okay, so what you're seeing here is this is my AT-115. And this cover, I forgot the exact model of it. This was my very first cover. Uh, my first uh, astrograph, if you will, was that Stellar View SV-70T. And I picked out a cover that was enough uh, for at least an 80 mil, maybe even a, f a 100 millimeter uh, cover. Now you can see it, 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 barely <laughs> it barely fits under there. With the dew shield retracted, I've got my whole imaging train in there, and it does actually cover it up. Uh, but it was a little bit of a tight fit for that 115. So if you've got a, uh, an astronomic AT-115 EDT or a similar scope, I definitely recommend getting something a bit larger. Uh, and what you're seeing back there is my Celestron Edge, 8-inch Edge, and this SC, this cover, I think, is good up to 10 inches on an SCT, and again, no problem fitting the imaging train under there at all. Uh, now here's a picture. This is with that 6-inch refractor cover, and underneath this is that uh, TAC TOA-130 that I borrowed for a week. And again, you see the edge back there. And just a closer up shot. All right. And this shot here. Now, this was taken February 2021. Uh, I'm in central Texas, uh, west, 40 miles or so uh, west of Austin, Texas. Uh, so, so all this white stuff on the ground, <laughs> we're not supposed to get that stuff. It's extremely rare. Uh, that we get this. And in fact, uh, for, for
for that time, that a week in February, uh, they called it Snowmageddon. <laughs> it shut the entire state down. I mean, it's laughable. I'm from New Jersey, and this much snow would not have shut the state down. But Texas is just not set up for it. And, I mean, in fairness, the temperatures dropped very, very low. It was uh, an unprecedented cold front uh, that hit us. And so the entire time, my EQ6 sat out there underneath the cover. I had the scope inside. Uh, this is before I picked up that second EQ6. Uh, but yeah, it was out there for over a week and the mount still works fine. Now the mount has rusted a little bit. I mean, just like you can see some rust on the um, Alt-As adjustment knobs and uh, the counterweights, of course, have a little bit of rust on them. But it's it's not a lot of rust. now. This was in 2021. It's we're now January 2023, and uh, the mount's still guiding and tracking just fine. So overall, I'm very happy with these mounts. They're definitely worth. Uh, I mean, these uh, covers. They're definitely worth it. Uh, the cost is a little bit on the high side compared to other covers that are out there. But I mean, when you consider the cost of the gear <laughs> that they're protecting, uh, it's it's definitely worth it. You definitely don't want to go cheap on those. Now, uh, if you feel compelled to buy one of these covers, I do have an affiliate link in the description for High Point Scientific. So if you click on that and buy the cover, I'll get a very tiny little uh, commission on that. But, I mean, that's not why I'm doing this video. These, uh, these covers, I've got three of them. I've had them for a few years now. And I recommend them to anyone that's looking for a telescope cover based on my personal experience with these. So if you're watching this and you do have these covers, uh, I'd love to hear uh, any stories that you may have. Drop them down in the comments. Um, other than that, clear skies and um, have a good evening. Cheers.